Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In Ruby Snack number 22, I'll be taking you through the implementation and usage of the Froala WYSIWYG. Froala is a free WYSIWYG, except that if you want to push this to a production site where it'll be customer facing, you will need to purchase a developer license. If you want to get rid of this big red message that Froala puts in there, just pointing out that you haven't purchased a license yet. I used this on a project with the client who didn't mind the red message. It was just for him to produce content for users, so he didn't mind it, especially since it's a super clean WYSIWYG. In this episode, you'll learn how to install Froala. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced, but I'm not sure. You'll set up a model and controller if needed, add the WYSIWYG to the form, and then add the WYSIWYG to a view. If you want to code along, you'll just need a Rails app created and a view with a form. In earlier episodes, we were working from an app that I called Ruby Thursday. It had a Starship model and a crew member model. So we'll be using that today. It doesn't matter what your models are called, but you do need to have something already built. All right, here's some resources for you for the fro a WYSIWYG. And let's take a look at these. Let's first take a look at the fro a homepage for the WYSIWYG. You can test it out there if you'd like. There's a lot of different information on the page. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the docs. It's it's a very well-documented editor. You can see there's information about plugins as well as options, lots and lots of options. You can customize this to your heart's content. Now they built a gem that wraps up all the assets for you to make it easy to install in a Ruby on Rails app. So we will be going through this installation and usage in just a moment. First up, we need to install the WYSIWYG. So we're gonna add to the gem file, the WYSIWYG Rails gem. Now they don't mention it, but they do actually reference Font Awesome in their CSS files. So if you don't already have Font Awesome Rails in your app, let's go ahead and add that as well. We'll bundle install, and then we will add the different lines to the application JS and the application CSS to call these assets. Here we are in our gem file, just gonna copy paste that right in there at the bottom. We will bundle install, it doesn't take too long. And it's running, gotta install those gems. All right, and we're good. Now back to our editor, go into app, then assets, then JavaScripts, and we will open up application JS and paste it in right there. You wanna do that before require tree. Now we'll go into the application CSS and include those three lines. So we have all that we need to show the editor and save. If you're working with the Ruby Thursday files, you'll need to do a couple of things to make it ready for the WYSIWYG. The main thing that you do need is a text column. WYSIWYGs will let you have lots and lots of lovely text and it'll include HTML. So you need lots of room, a string will not work. You need a text column. So for us, we'll add that text column to crew members. We'll add a bio, we'll rake DB migrate, and then we'll add that the bio is a param that can be accepted in the controller. In our terminal, let's go ahead and run that migration command so that we can have a new column for our WYSIWYG. And it takes just a little bit of time and there it goes. Now I like to go ahead and double check these migrations. Just go into the database, migrate just to make sure I didn't miss an S or something like that. It looks good. Let's go ahead and rake DB migrate so that it will add the column and there it goes. Next up, we need to add it in the controller. So that's controllers and then crew member. We wanna make sure that it'll save the bio when we save the form. So we're gonna add bio right here to the crew member params. And that's it. Now we get to the really fun stuff of adding the WYSIWYG to our form. That's where the magic happens. First, we need to add a text area for the bio. We're gonna set the ID to WYSIWYG. You can name that whatever you like. Then lower in the file, we're going to include the script for the WYSIWYG. So you see I have the ID there in the JavaScript and then 
editable, that's the main thing that the Froala editor is looking for, that's all you really need to have. The rest are different options. I'm showing you a couple in this episode, and the next episode we'll get more into this, including some plugins and other fun stuff. For today, I'm just putting in a couple of things. So inline mode false means that it'll keep to your CSS, whatever that is. So it won't expand further than what you have. I like to put in a minimum height. The WYSIWYG expands as you include things in it. So it comes out very skinny at first. So I like to make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna include just these buttons. There are a set of default buttons if you like. But I'm just gonna include these. Let's go ahead and add that to our files. Let's open up a form for crew members. And then we're gonna add it just below division. Right there. And if you watched other episodes, you'll see that this is actually a nested form, but we're just gonna add it to the crew member section right here. And then at the bottom, we need to add our script. You can also add this, you know, in the application JS as well, I like to put it right there because I'm going to modify it really specifically in that file. Next up, we're going to add to the view. We'll be adding it to our Starship view because that's actually where we look at crew members. We just need a really easy thing. Just need to have the class fro a la view, and that's what will load the information from the WYSIWYG. You do need to include simple format so that it'll keep all that lovely formatting. Opening up our Starship's show view. We're going to add it in the crew member section there. It's showing all the different crew members, so we'll also show the bio. So we'll add it right below holodeck programs, and we'll add class fro a la view so that it'll show it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here we are at the editor. It's loading up our WYSIWYG. And I'm gonna play around with our sci-fi themes and use R2D2 as my example crew member. Make him under engineering, why not? And now I'm just gonna paste in something I found about R2D2 on the Wikipedia site. So there's a couple of formatting things that already came in, it'll keep, but let's go ahead and do something else. Let's go ahead and, yeah, let's center it and let's make something italics just so we're playing around to see what'll happen. Good, and then I'll go ahead and have a source. Let's go ahead and just write in Wikipedia. Wikipedia. And now we'll include the link. So that's a very easy way to do it. It'll take the formatting of whatever your links are in your CSS. So let's go ahead and add a starship per se. Let's uh, add the Millennium Falcon. And I know they don't have holodecks, but there was a hologram of Obi-Wan. So let's just add Obi-Wan to that. And we'll make our new crew member. And we'll go right to scene the show page for the Starship. And there it is, all the lovely formatting right there. The links and everything. And we're done. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Ruby Snacks. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are not subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, go ahead and push that big red button right there. And if you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com by clicking on the Ruby and sign on up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Have a great day and see you soon.